for uh, login. By the time we have launched pre poll, I request all the participants who have been logging in to kindly submit their polls as their feedback stands very valuable to us. Good evening, all. This is Dr. Shubhi Kulshreshta welcoming you all to a live webinar on innovations in diagnostics what's upcoming for clinicians. It gives me immense honor and pleasure to invite such uh, decent and innovative personalities amongst us, like doc, uh, moderator, Dr. Ashok Pratan, and the panelists for today, Dr. J. A. Jayalal, Dr. Rajesh Pandey, Mr. Naresh Hashija, and our eminent speakers for today, Dr. Somakan Das, Dr. Ashok Kumar Barmali, and uh, Dr. Ashok uh, Asim Mishra. Sorry. With this, I'm moving towards the introduction of each of our uh, panelists and moderator. So we welcome our moderator for today, Dr. Ashok Ratan, who is advisor, Redcliffe Labs, and ex-WHO advisor, Southeast Asia region, ex-WHO lab director. Dr. Prof uh, Professor Ashok Ratan is a medical bio a microbiologist by profession. He has conferred APJ Abdul Kalam Award for Lifetime Contribution to Medical Sciences in 2018. He has held an important position in academics, like in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, JN Medical College, Aligarh, Mahatma uh, Gandhi Medical University, Jaipur. He has published over 100 research papers in peer-reviewed international journals, guided over 40 students for their MD, MS, PhD, and is named in 30 international patents. He is an author of NPT-sponsored published book, by Churchill Livingstone's Antimicrobials in lab Laboratory Medicine. He has contributed more than a dozen chapters in different workbooks. Dr. Ashok has conducted various workshops in different countries. We welcome you, sir, to our platform. Our panelist for today is uh, Professor Dr. J. A. Jalal, who is immediate past president of, uh, National, Medic uh, of Na National President of IMA. Professor in HOD Surgery, Kanyakumari Government Medical College. He is governing council members of NBEMS, District Governor, Wise Men's International, District 3 SWIR, Vice President of Commonwealth Medical Associations, London, UK, National Coordinator, IMA, UNESCO, Bioethics Chair, Member Board of Studies at Dr. MGR Medical University, State President of IMA Tamil Nadu, and President of Tamil Nadu National Medical Council previously. Our next panelist for today is Dr. Rajesh Pandey, who is National General Secretary of ISCCM and a Senior Director and HOD at BLK Max Center of Excellence for Critical Care at BLK Max Super Speciality Hospital, New Delhi. He has been a teacher and examiner at uh, DRNB, Critical Care by National Board of Examinations, Indian Diploma in Critical Care Medicine uh, at Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine, and has done uh, and has been a teacher for Indian Fellowship in Critical Care Medicine. He has been an instructor for BLS, ACLS, and BTLS courses. His past positions includes of chairman at critical care and emergency medicine, senior consultant and head of critical care medicines at Fortis Hospital Noida, consultant department of critical care medicines at Sir Drangaram Hospital, and many such national and international positions have been held by him in the past. We welcome Dr. Uh, Mr. Naresh Hasija, who is the president Vice President Public Health Myelin Pharmaceuticals Private Limited, a Viatris company. He is an entrepreneur in public health care and market access, currently heading the public health in Myelin, a Viatris company, as Vice President. Mr. Naresh has joined Myelin Pharmaceuticals in 2015 and has close to two decades of work experience in pharmaceutical industry in both public and private markets across several therapy areas. He has always been passionate but affordable about affordable innovations, innovated, uh, innovative business models, and throughout his career, he has also been a mentor to several healthcare startups. This passion uh, coupled 
with his belief in potential of public health and his mission towards improvement of healthcare in India. We welcome you, sir, and we welcome all our panelists amongst it. Our speakers for today is Dr. Somyakan, uh, Somyakan Das, who is a co-founder of Metal Healthcare, a medical doctor and IIM graduate. He has accomplished experience in healthcare industry. His special interests are based out of business and clinical practices, sales, business development, strategic engagements, healthcare administration, medical research, and people management. Our next speaker for today is Dr. Ashok Kumar Barmali, who is, uh, who is Associate Professor at Pradyuman Bal Memorial Hospital, Kalinga Institute of Medical Sciences, Odisha. His professional trainings constitute of pre-operative and critical care work workshops at PGI Chandigarh. His fellowship in ECMO, American Heart Association accredited instructor for BCLS and ACLS courses, Simul uh, simulation instruction for em emergency and cardiac care. He has published various literature in reputed journals. His awards constitutes of S. Satapati Memorial Award, tries for best paper presentation in capacity of teaching faculty. We welcome you, sir. Our next speaker for today is Dr. Asim Mishra, who is a co-founder of Prante Solutions Private Limited. His experience con contributes of chief technology officers at KIIT uh, Bhubaneswar, also an associate professor at KIIT School of Biotechnology, a UGC assistant professor at Biolog uh, of Biotechnology at Utkal University. He is a PhD, MSc and MBA from IIM Ahmedabad, Gujarat. His awards constitutes of Indo-Russia DBT grant for Harvard SAI Tata Trust, IIT Delhi Social Innovation Awards towards developing diagnostic platform for detection of pre eclampsia Received Wel uh, Welcome Trust DBT Alliance Early Career Fellow for funding postdoctoral research. Awarded Ranbaxy Science Scholar Award and received several other awards and a gold medal in bi biotechnology. We welcome all the speakers and our panelists for today. As I read the structure of webinar, you, uh, you must see that we have launched pre-poll. I request all the participants who have logged in to kindly submit their polls. Uh, after the introduction, we would have the speaker sessions. Session one would be taken up by Dr. Soumya Kandas, who, uh, who would be speaking about Medtel connect, Connected Care and Remote Patient Monitoring. Next, after that, Dr. Ashok would be uh, taking up with requirement of public awareness and skill development on cardiopulmonary resuscitation in countries with increasing sudden cardiac deaths. After that, we would have our uh, third speaker session with Dr. Asim, who would be taking up about an innovate, uh, at, uh, about Prante solutions and innovative solution to ena enable rapid renal health assessment for point of care. After all these speaker sessions, we would have a panel discussion based out of medical innovations, challenges, solutions, and disruption that can impact healthcare in India. The panel discussion would be moderated by Dr. Ashok Ratan with our panelists, Dr. J. A. Jayalal, Dr. Rajesh Pandey, and Mr. Naresh Asija. We would have a Q&A session for panel discussion, and a vote of thanks would be delivered. I request all the participants to kindly stay with us till the post poll. The general instructions of this webinar are, all the participants will be muted during this webinar. If you have any queries, please type in Q&A section. If you have any comments, please type in chat section. Queries and questions will be addressed at the end of webinar by the moderator. This session will be recorded and the recording would be shared via email notifications once the recorder is available. Polls will be raised at the start as well as at the end of the sessions. So I'll request all the participants to kindly provide with their feedback. I would now like to take a moment to thank our supporter for today, Viatris. Viatris is committed to meaningfully reducing the burden of both non-communicable and infectious diseases by leveraging our scientific medical manufacturing and commercial expertise to develop holistic integrated solutions for diagnosis, prevention, and treatment of these conditions. They are also a global leader in treating different infectious diseases like HIV AIDS, hepatitis, tuberculosis, 
and offer an extensive portfolio across these diseases states. From manufacturing a pediatric-friendly enteroviral used to treat HIV-positive infants to providing HIV self-test in some low- and middle-income countries, Viatris is innovating to help patients. With this, I'll stop sharing my screen and hand over the stage to our speakers, Dr. Somakar. Good evening. Am I audible to all? Yes, you are audible. Thank you for inviting me. i delighted to present uh, and I uh, will uh, stop sharing my screen. Okay. Yeah, sure, sir. All of you can see my screen? Yes, sir, it is visible. Thank you, thank you all. So uh, I'm Dr. Somekant, I'm a clinician, then I went for my MBA full-time at uh, I'm Lucknow and I've been uh, uh, co uh, working as an entrepreneur and co-founder at uh, Metal Healthcare. So we work in uh, connected care and remote patient monitoring uh, in uh, five countries, uh, covered almost two lakh patients and uh, learning new things from people uh, all around and patients, clinicians, you know, and I have uh, uh, tried to summarize it in a very short, crisp manner, uh, but I would love to take your question and queries as we proceed. Thank you all. So, uh, we have to understand uh, what is connected care and remote patient monitoring and how it's helping uh, physician doctors you know uh, in uh, in the future of diagnostics uh, what what is happening now what will happen five years uh, uh, ahead so uh, if you see the global connected healthcare market it's uh, projected to grow from a, around a 50 billion in 2021 to around 300 billion in uh, uh, by 2028 at a cagr of around 28.4 percent, right? Uh, what does it uh, 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 breaks down to? So, if you see any of uh, any of this uh, connected care platform or solution, uh, here I have used the example of suppose a diabetes. Uh, it, it you can divide into five basic parts. One is patient activation, where uh, you know you have to get uh, the patient onto a connected care platform where they use tools and uh, you know uh, all suppose diabetes, diabetes care routine. Uh, they have a virtual coaching system where the doctors, the counselors, you know, manage the virtual coaching. Third is one of the most important where connected devices, sensors, uh, wellness solutions are put into that platform which connects the patient to the doctor, the attendant, the decision makers, and the devices and sensor collect all this data from the patient and all these data are analyzed and inferences are given to the doctor, the patient, the attendant to have a more therapeutic and a sustainable healthcare routine for them. Okay. And the next is in the entire ecosystem that we built around this. We call it a digital enabled ecosystem, which simplifies your logistics, patient access challenges, right? So it's the infra and ecosystem. So we have to understand that. Uh, so uh, we have to understand that remote patient monitoring uh, uh, is enabled by a connected care system. So here, uh, if you see the remote care monitoring market per se, now it, it is going to 100 billion by the year 2025. Okay. Uh, there is a, the rise is due to an aging population, need to expand access to healthcare, and the, and the basic need to reduce healthcare cost. So this the diagram explains that if there is a patient, they are connected to a lot of sensors, IoT devices, right? It starts, it can start from your glucometer, it can go from ECG, it can go to your lung devices, liver devices. Yeah, these are small, smart. Uh, uh, having a Wi-Fi Bluetooth systems which collects data from the patient in terms of invasive and non-invasive. They are connected through a mobile a hub or Wi-Fi to the cloud 
and the data can be analyzed by the doctors, the paramedics, and decisions can be taken. And those decisions can help the patient to man manage chronic conditions, patients from remote areas to have their daily diagnostics report so that the technology leverages all this uh, platform to help the decision makers. So we, when we are talking about, there is a background noise. Can we uh, please mute? Yeah. So when we are talking uh, in this session about clinicians or doctors taking decision, we have a lot of surveys where you know one in three doctors believe that personal connected health devices help improve patient health. So this trend is rising, rising at a very uh, uh, high pace in the Western countries. But post COVID, we see in countries like India, uh, uh, where the doctors, clinicians, hospitals are adapting these technologies, and ninety percent of the patients believe that if they use all this monitoring connected care solution, their prognosis are better. Okay, so if you see uh, this uh, uh, data handling and security is a major concern, along with the importance of defined and certified technical standards. It exactly the survey that we are having, but 60% of doctors are now concerned that data patient data should be handled and secured. If data is handled in a secured manner, the doctors, the clinicians are willing to take this and adapt all this technology. Okay. Uh, are doctors ready to accept this certified devices and their data to clinical take clinical de decisions? One third of them are. And I believe as we progress, we will see much more doctors adopting these technologies. I will uh, uh, show you a use case which uh, we have done where a connected ecosystem for maternal care has been established. So ASHA's AM Health Community Health Worker use this platform, take this go and go for pregnancy monitoring in remote areas. They do all the tests that a pregnant lady should need, and it is transferred to the decision makers, the doctors, the policy makers, and identification of uh, complicated pregnancy is done. And these people are followed and treatment is done. And through this platform and technology, uh, we uh, uh, are doing a massive change how uh, complicated pregnancies remote area can be done. Uh, there's a caregiver app, there's a patient app, and there's a web portal where data and vital measurements are there. Uh, uh, all can be analyzed and decisions can be taken. So in a country like India, we have to think of the determinants, right? Whatever solution we bring, it has to have accessibility. It should affordable and it should be of higher quality. In quality, the data security, data management, the uh, 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 authenticity of the data or the uh, diagnostic parameters that are coming had to be certified by a FDA or a European C or something like that. So all these things has to be taken care of to have a proper scientific uh, uh, you know, technology leverage in the coming years. Okay, the uh, if you see if you if you think telemedicine, it should be accessible at affordable rate. The point of care diagnostics, they should give data in very short amount of time. It should have low cost. Uh, 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 in the strips or the consumables that are used should be at minimum cost and uh, economy of scale has to be there. Patient also should get educated on this platform in their uh, uh, vernacular. They should be taught how to use all these things in a very efficient way. Uh, uh, and the records or the electronic health records and analytics has to be certified by the authorities so that we use world approved algorithms to manage all this data and make the work of the clinician, the doctor, easy. And how do we do it? Uh, uh, we are adding a lot of machine learning uh, uh, algorithms to our platform. AI based platform so that they reduce the cost because it will uh, manage a lot of things in a very short amount of time. And the more their data, the more the merrier and accuracy. Uh, it will help in the operational impact, accurate diagnostic, take personalized patient care, automate a lot of processes, collate and analyze data in silos. Okay. And we have to also build it sustainable. We have to make it a business impact. Otherwise, things will not continue and crumble. Okay, so uh, 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 two examples, 
a patient x-ray and a data of patient x-rays of thousands can be analyzed by our tool or uh, of the tool mark available tool, which can detect a presence of pneumonia or no pneumonia. So that screening thousands and lakhs of people in a country like India becomes easy. Or having a lot of pictures, suppose gastric mucosa and are catching early stage gastric ulcer and maybe a nodule or maybe a malignancy can be done by uh, picture recognition uh, uh, data by AI and the doctors can be suggested with whether uh, uh, what should be the next step or this patient bringing these patients to the hospital. So uh, 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 we are seeing a massive change in these tools and I think uh, uh, we all should educate and leverage all this technology for, for having a greater impact. Uh, I will keep it uh, with example short how Mittel is also putting around 60 plus devices into 20 categories and measuring all these parameters, whether it's in a population clinic or is a home care. Uh, data are being collected by all health workers and is analyzed and huge uh, uh, number of people at screen and doctors are adapting this technology to, you know, leverage their uh, uh, practice solving a lot of problems in a small amount of time and creating a change. Government and regulatory uh, uh, authorities have approved and appreciated and you know, know a lot of these data protocols is promoted now by the government of India and post COVID we are seeing a massive change in how public health screening uh, or, or uh, uh, telediagnostics is managed. Uh, we, we uh, have complete data security, automated prescription, uh, uh, own analytics, timely nudges, and we are scaling it. Uh, in terms of home care, also uh, private clinicians are using our platform, patients are using the plate platform now to manage diabetes, now to manage hypertension and cardiac diseases. The patients use a very useful kit to measure all parameters and these are assessed by their uh, uh, attendants, the doctor concerned, uh, there is an interoperability data from hospital to hospital, historical data of your sugar, hypertension parameters are all analyzed and timely nudges and timely intervention can manage a lot of patients. We believe that we all will appreciate uh, uh, the leverage of technology. Doctors cannot be replaced, clinicians cannot be replaced. These are the tools which only help them with their time management and higher uh, 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 approach and uh, higher knowledge in which a lot of problems can be solved. And I believe these are the diagnostics uh, 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 interventions and uh, innovations that are coming for the next five to 10 years. Uh, thank you. I would love to answer your question and queries. Uh, uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful presentation. Now, I request uh, Dr. Ashok Kumar Burmali to kindly take over the stage. Uh, so you need to unshare the screen. It's still shared. Yeah, it's now done. Huh? Thank you. Do you know, every year around more than 20 lakh sudden cardiac deaths are happening in India, leading to $3 billion economy. Namaste. Myself, Dr. Osho Bodmali, a cardiac anesthesiologist by profession and founder of Innofunit. We have the solution, Sanjeevani QCPR, the research station ecosystem connecting cardiac arrest victim with emergency healthcare. We are a medtech startup incorporated in Orissa. If we look for the causes of various causes of cardiac arrest, most common cause in last few years are, it's around 12 lakh sudden cardiac deaths below 40 year age. Then almost 2000 to 3000 death happening in India every year due to lightning or thunderstorm injury. 35 deaths due to fire, out of which around one third suffocation and cardiac arrest is the main cause of death in those situations. And 85 deaths happening every day due to drowning. It shows the spectrum of 
death contributed by cardiac event only. And we have come across various print and electronic media news about loss of lives of even eminent personality in the post area of the society. Affordability was not the reason. Accessibility was not the reason. It's the awareness, lack of awareness. What to do in case of sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac activity stoppage? If we review the basic life support guideline made by American Heart Association, the first two are the call for help, the telephone-like signal, and the early provision of high-quality chest compression. In case of sudden mechanical stoppage of cardiac activity, human brain suffers irreversible damage after six minutes if there is incomplete or inappropriate quality of chest compression. And we cannot expect our emergency medical team within six minutes at the event time because 85% of the sudden cardiac arrests are happening outside the hospital with a survival rate of less than 10%. This survival can be double or triple if the friend, family, or the bystander gives effective high-quality chest compression within six minutes. What does this mean, effective high-quality chest compression? Means push hard and fast to the middle part of the chest or the sternum at a rate of 100 at a depth of 5 cm, allowing complete chest recoil between two successive compressions. But what is there to monitor these things? Is there anything? to help the common man for such things? No. Till one year ago, the answer was no. Now we have come up with the solution. Sanjeevani, it's a handheld gadget with audio-visual feedback in regional Indian language. The feedback is about the rate, depth, and recoil adequacy to guide the performer so that at the event site, before arrival of the emergency healthcare team, the common man can give effective chest compression. In the version two, we are going for the wall mount unit where it is the IoT base. After using the device, the GPRS navigation from the GPRS integration, nearest ambulance and nearest hospital will know about the event. So it's just like the code blue outside the hospital. And during discussion with various stakeholders and the various grant agency, we came across the feedback that Indians are not aware. Unless someone is aware, how you can expect your device is going to help? So to fill that gap, we have come up with the Sanjeevani QCPR kiosk. That is the first Indian CPR skill stations made by Inofunity. It's the picture. It's already installed at Stratopurisa. And we have few beta customers like Taj Vivanta, Kokila Ben, MTZ, and Maharashtra government, where the common man can practice. It's an instructor free self learning or practicing kiosk. Test you, learn the skill, test your skill, and apply the skill whenever there is a need. And it was presented at the WHO Medical Innovation Center, Besakapatna Mantis World Health Day. It's a good news that government of India has and CBSE has incorporated the compression only life support in class nine syllabus, but there is nothing to assist the school. They don't have the trainer. So the kiosk is going to help them. We are a team of medical expert, technological expert, and interns from marketing and engineering background. If we come to the competitive segment, then there is no competitor in India for this handheld gadget. Few automatic chest compression devices are there available abroad, which are costing up to 18 to 20 lakhs. And as I have told, our problem statement was six minutes. We cannot expect the emergency medical team. So these high-end or sophisticated gadgets is present with the emergency medical team or the ambulance or hospital casualty itself. So it's a no use for the outside hospital cardiac arrest. So we are the first mover in this segment. Feedback in regional Indian language is there. Patent is published. And various comorbidizing agent and complementary ecosystem is there. In next few months, we will be making our own 
populating mannequin. So the area of use will be sky rising apartment, railway stations, hospitals, and uh, shopping malls, airport, or even inside the ambulance. This is our go to market strategy. And uh, it will be a B2B and B2C category of uh, uh, revenue generation model. And for the kiosk, it is B2B and B2G. Kiosk is already made, handheld gadget is made. I will show the video in the end because by that time, audience might be curious. So what is the video he is telling about? What is the device? So in this year, we are planning to install 100 kiosks by March 2023 through various CSR activity and government agencies. And we have been acknowledged by WHO Medical Innovation Hubbard, Louis Agarsnap this year. And we are the finalist, one of the finalists in Tata AM Kolkata Social Enterprising Contest this year. This innovation was considered as a social innovation. This is the device. In The feedback is in Oriya language. When you give the compression manually, your carpal bone and the radius ulna are 90 degrees. So the tractional force is there. Here, my carpal bone and radius ulna is parallel. The tractional force is gone. It's giving three feedback. Good job, low rate or near, no recoil. It's telling dhimash, it means rate is low. In, the feedback is in Oriya language. Here the video is. Ergonomical design at 7.5 centimeter tricep come into action. And the red depth and recoil. And uh, in next three or four months, we are expecting that after the funding issue is sorted out, it will be available in Indian market at a cost of less than 4,000 rupees. This is the kiosk. It's the instructor free kiosk where one can learn. So now for the learning the basic life support or the CPR, one has to go through the course and there should be intermittent testing of own rate and performance. At the end of the performance, the performer can get the score. What was the chest compression fraction he has provided? so that intermittently these things can upskill the healthcare worker or the common man also. In next few days, we are going to install it at Taj Vivanta Bhubaneswar and next to other star hotels of India. So after this KK event, all these uh, public aggregated area and uh, fund, you know, the area where uh, the probability of getting the hypertension, diabetic or sudden cardiac death is more, they are contacting us for this kiosk installation. Thank you. I will be happy to answer your queries. Thank you so much, sir. The queries and questions would be addressed at the end of the webinar. So I'll request Dr. Asin Mishra to kindly take over the stage. Dr. Asin, this uh, screen is visible, but you're not audible and if you could make it in the screen, uh, full screen view. Yeah. Hi. I hope you can see the presentation, ProFlow you. Um, so we could uh, see the presentation, but if you could make it in the reading full view mode. Ah, this is some issue I'm having here. Is it okay now? Yeah, it is fine now. Uh, Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for giving this opportunity to present what we have been doing for the last couple of years. Uh, as Prante Solutions, we are focusing on developing 
novel sensing technologies that can address uh, the unmet needs of uh, the IVD and diagnostic industry. So this is one of the products that I would like to showcase today. Uh, we call it ProFlowU and um, it's, it's uh, the, probably the only device in the market that allows you to measure your renal health status at point of care or as a self-help monitoring technology. Now, I'm sure to this uh, audience, it's not a new fact that uh, roughly around 9.1% of the world population currently seems to be affected or identified with some of the other form of uh, CKD. And more than 80% of these patients who receive treatments for kidney failure are only in the affluent countries. And this leaves a huge gap of a uh, huge number of pa patients who go undetected in the early stages of uh, the CKD in either form. Now, the good part is that uh, most CKD uh, patients lie in stage one, two or stage three. And it's only a very small fraction, which is roughly about 1.8% of the total number of CKD patients who are identified at stage four. The unfortunate part is that people usually go unnoticed or the disease goes unnoticed while the person is still in stage one, two, and three where the disease could be reversed. So if you look at the global map, CKD disease uh, affects a lot of uh, DALI across the globe. So it is not just a disease burden, but it's also an economic burden to a majority of the countries. And these countries mostly are India, Indian uh, subcontinent, Africa and Brazil, who by far have the least uh, developed healthcare system. Of course, I would uh, beg to differ a little bit in the sense uh, saying that India is not a developed healthcare system, but India is, but the healthcare access and the perspective of a common man towards uh, personal healthcare is still in its infancy in uh, India. Of course, other countries, the story is the same. This is a kind of uh, representation of the 9.1% of the CKD patients across the globe. If you see the majority lie, unfortunately, in the East Asia, Southeast Asia, Central Asia, Asia Pacific and South Asia. So which is roughly, uh, it's a little more than 57%, uh, but that's, that's the sad story of things. The rest of the world contributes lesser than the CKD load only in only Asia. In India, now it is being recognized uh, even in, you know, general, uh, by general public and in uh, newspapers that CKD is rising to become the fifth leading cause of death. It's estimated roughly 11.4 crore people in India have currently been identified as having CKD. So, which means that there are still a larger number of people who are probably in stage one, two or stage three who have not been identified as having chronic kidney disease as yet. Now, if you see the normal diagnostic parameters, which are offered almost everywhere, uh, encompasses a list of parameters, glucose, urobilin, nitrite, and they are done on dipstick test or urine analyzers. Unfortunately, the relevance to renal health situation is relatively low. The only two parameters which can objectively define a kidney's malfunction or early stages of kidney disorder are the protein or the albumin content in the urine, and the creatinine content. Among these two as well, it seems that the albumin values or the, uh, the predictability of kidney health from albumin uh, imbalance is much greater than creatinine. So if you see in this map on the left, you see that if you have high albumin, whereas low, you know, relatively normal GFR rates, you are still at high risk to a kidney disease. So if that is so, then being able to measure albumin concentration in the urine objectively and quantitatively should have a reasonable prognostic value. And that is where we are operating. This device ProFlowU consists of a reader unit, a cartridge and an app. So it does, which measures or allows you to measure urinary albumin and creatinine. It already has two uh, granted patents, one trademark, and we recently published uh, one abstract uh, from the work. This is, uh, we did a head on comparison of uh, our technology with the beckman coulter immunoturbidity based method uh, with roughly about 180 samples. And we see a reasonably good correlation be between uh, what we can measure and what the gold standard in clinical practice is as of today. So 
there are various places where kidney health gets affected diabetes mellitus uh, chronic kidney disease cardiovascular disorders are definitely the most uh, pre prevalent amongst uh, contributors to kidney disease however you also have relevance in cancer preeclampsia acute kidney disorders ketogenic diets and drug abuse so these are kind of the areas where we see value uh, that our product can give so why did we develop this technology at all so first uh, ish challenge was there was no quantitative measurement of urine albumin at poc or bedside what you had was dipsticks and dipsticks are slightly difficult to quantitate the second challenge was no test was available that could measure somewhere between 30 mg per uh, liter to about 600 mg per liter or 900 mg per liter most of the immunoturbidity test kind of taper off at about 300 400 mg per liter uh, concentrations our dipsticks are not sensitive below 30 mg per deciliter which is 300 mg per liter so you have a gap where uh, you could either measure only for microalbumin or you could measure for high proteinuria whereas our tech allows you to cover both the ranges in a quantitative fashion the third challenge was that if you went with the high sensitive microalbumin based tests, which are mostly antibody based tests, they require a cold chain. So at self-help uh, monitoring or at point of care outside uh, where a refrigeration is not so easily accessible, the technology is unable to reach. So we did three essential uh, innovations to uh, address this gap. First, we developed a novel sensing system which is quantitative and does not require cold chain storage. So the cartridges can be stored for about more than a year at room temperature. The device is easy to use a uh, calibrated cartridge system. So it's a lab in a cubit. So the cartridge looks, uh, oh, I can sh can't show you unfortunately. So it's a cartridge where you add, uh, is already pre-coated with all the reagents. So as a user, you just add a defined amount of urine into the system and the rest of it happens by itself. And the reader system is again calibration free uh, as it is IoT enabled, it is calibration free for the user. It's calibrated once while it is manufactured. Just three steps to taking a reading. You take urine from your urine collection vial, add it to a clarifying agent, add the whole content to the cartridge, wait for two minutes for the entire content to go down and the reaction uh, happen, put it into the device and take a reading on the app. So the opportunity that we see is that by a, being able to effectively monitor urine albumin and measure systemic rise in the level can alarm for numerous medical conditions. And of course, there's an increasing incidence of uh, the disease all across the globe. Uh, I would kind of end the presentation now by saying that there are various reasons why uh, you need ProFlowU. It's easy to use. You can trust the results that you get and it can be used by anyone and anywhere. Uh, since we are designing it mostly for the self-health uh, use category, we took uh, great care in looking at the ergonomics of the system, the usability of the system, as well as the attractiveness while maintaining functionality of the technology. Our philosophy is that medical devices need not look uh, you know, fearful. They, they can look attractive and they can be an object of uh, uh, you know sense that you have a sense that you have something fashionable with you uh, this in summary is a, a value proposition where we see that proflow provides a value proposition across various categories it reduces your dependence on patholab for people who need to monitor urine albumin regularly you can reliably resolve the measures. You can track the health status being a you know, smart uh, product. From If you compare with uh, the current uh, industry standards, you have clinical uh, analyzers where the device cost is very, very high. The per test cost is low. So the user somehow uh, is charged in a way to amortize the cost of the huge device. The accurate and otherwise you have POCT uh, devices which are either uh, you know uh, again not as expensive as clinical analyzers but still significantly expensive for someone to own for his personal health monitoring with a slightly higher cost per test. 
Proflow use sits uh, in between both these uh, situations by giving you a device which is affordable for you to own and uh, at a very uh, you know cost effective CPT. With this, I thank you for your attention and I'll be open to questions. Thank you so much, sir. For your and can I just take and one more minute to show the video of how the product is used? Sure, sir. Uh, I'll stop sharing this and please bear with me for a minute. So if I may just add, the whole process takes three minutes, two minutes for the sample to be prepared and one minute for the reading to be collected on the smartphone device. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would request Dr. Ashok Ratan and our panelist, Dr. J. A. Jayalal, Dr. Rajesh Pandey, Mr. Naresh Hasija to kindly take over the stage for panel discussion. I'll request all the speakers with us to, to kindly uh, also uh, throw in some of their insights with the recent advancement of diagnostics. Over to you, Dr. Ashok, sir. Good, af good afternoon and good, e or good evening or good morning, wherever you are. After three excellent presentations, uh, we have three uh, panelists with us. So let me introduce the three panelists. The first one is Professor Jayalal, uh, who's immediate past national president of IMA. He's also professor and head of surgery at uh, Kanyakumari Government Medical College. Then we have Dr. Rajesh Pandey, who's the National General Secretary of Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine. He's Senior Director and Head of Department of BLK Max Center of Excellence for Critical Care at BLK Max Super Specialty Hospital in New Delhi. And then we have Mr. Naresh Hasija, who's Vice President in Charge of Public Health for Myelin Pharmaceuticals. So uh, let me first start with uh, the get the ball rolling by asking a question from the panelists. And uh, we decided that we'll ask the same question from all the three panelists. So they will have an opportunity to advise the three entrepreneurs about what would you suggest to an entrepreneur who is bringing to market and innovation to the market? What are the challenges and solutions of bringing a new device to the Indian market, in the Indian healthcare. Uh, we can start with Dr. Jella. Yes, sir. What's your views about, what, would, what advice would you give to the entrepreneurs who are bringing uh, new devices to the market? Thank you very much, sir. First of all, I would like to uh, congratulate them and applaud them for their uh, uh, interest and involvement in this field. I could see that even some of the doctors are involving into this and getting into the field, so we welcome that. Yes, now from the smartwatch to the fitness uh, materials to a lot of wearables device, the smart jewelry, smart glass, and everything that we are progressing very fastly. Uh, since this is a question that what we as a doctor fraternity is expecting 
uh, I would like to just bring a few challenges which we face. And uh, first of all, as every one of you are saying, that we all are worried much on the confidentiality and the, the, the security of the data. Whatever we said and done, we are not able to achieve that. In the COVID time, that a lot of companies has come for the telemedicine, but the amount of the breach in the confidentiality, that is not only happening in India, even in Western countries, literature says, almost 25 to 30 percentage and uh, there is a confidence uh, is getting low. So we need to have a standardized structure role to have this one to ensure that every doctor will be able to uh, use that. Second, most importantly, what I am worried personally on the, uh, the credibility of these data. Because we recently had a study of the different fitness watches with a thousand steps and how much calorie is spent. And there is a various vast variability from 10% to 25% of that variability as we are seeing in the, the devices. So that shows that there is no standardized uh, calibration or standardized quality system which is available in any startups is coming. So when we are coming with a startup and giving a value uh, that is either the blood sugar or whether you are the calorie spent and whatever the amount. And there is always there is a, a, a difficulty is there. Yes, it is true, even among the laboratories, when the blood sugar, when we are testing, we see the difference. But this difference is something beyond the level, and it is sometimes it is uh, uh, taking the problem of, I mean, out of the uh, problem. There is no uh, standardization or the calibration values of this device is not there. Uh, so third uh, issue which I would like to bring to is uh, battery life. But any devices which we are using, which we are seeing the most problematic one is the battery life because most of the time it's a Wi-Fi is used, there is a battery is used a lot. And if there is some technology of the Bluetooth use, I think definitely it is useless. But uh, hardly anything, most of the things coming, the battery life, as we are talking more of the rural India, where we cannot depend upon the more of the electricity and the broadband uh, width. And we need to work on that and how in a small setup that you are going to give the battery life and how it is going to that. Uh, next one is the, the wear and tear. Because when we want to have these devices attached to the body and when he is exposed to the sunlight, when he is exposed to that dust and he is taking a water and how much it is resistant to that. It is not true in many times these startups are coming. They say that uh, this wearable device is good and it is water resistant. But when you put into the water, we see a different result. Okay. So that is not exactly the guarantee which is giving is not there. So when the, the ingress data or the ingress value which we are going to put in IP 360 or 64, whatever it is you are saying, there must be some reliability and something should be there. But it is naturally the people are using it day night. So you need to put that, especially the sweat which is coming from the body. The, the water which is there and they need to be, uh, we have that. I mean, the, the change which has to be there. And one more thing is an ergonomics and that is also very important. And many times when we talk about these devices and the startups which is coming, when it is using, going to be used personally, if something which is not able to be fit into that wearability part and if it is hindering his day-to-day -day work and it is making uh, something an extra fit like thing, and that will not have that accessibility and the people may not be able to use that and very, very frequently or uh, they, they, that. So that value of that ergonomics value, how you are going to do that and how you are going to uh, put that value is also important for that to see to that. And this all will be always have a good thing. Uh, we all know in the healthcare startups, unlike the Amazon or something which has come as a short of, and uh, very market it has gone very beyond the level of uh, comprehension. The majority of the startups which is coming in the healthcare industry are finding a difficulty in the first year and second year to sustain the maintainability of the cost and the progress because the progression in the healthcare startup is not going to be steady, not going to be uh, uh, in a, a rampant growth. It is only a frustrating thing and somebody who has to be there to see to that and your growth are helping. And one more is uh, the there's a mismatch between the doctor and the healthcare because we always say it's a bioengineering, biomedical, but all individually they are married, but they are living separately. It is not that many of the startups are not coming by interaction between the doctor and the technology or the doctor or engineer. Somebody is making it and it is being, being put into that. And some of the startups which has come really by the doctors personally involving in that or inter interacting with them, they are having a good result. So I need a more a homogeneous relationship between the engineers and uh, has to be maintained. The trust maintaining has to be also there. Uh, I, finally, I would say that over projection of the data, if you wear this, 
and you will get enough diabetes. If you wear this, you will be, I mean, uh, you are going to live for 100 days. That kind of false hope, and if you are going to give, that is going to be in a negative way. Let us not give any fake values or the fake news or the fake assurance to the people. That is a big problem. Even doctors we face and hospital we face. Now it is, uh, you are going to make in a big way. You have a challenge, and if this is data are going to be manipulated by some big corporate, you say 120 with the blood sugar has needed a treatment. And if your market is uh, tuned to that, even 115, you need to give a dose. And that is going to be a big way. That's the influence of the pharma industry, which is going to act on that is a very big thing. Uh, that has to be a big challenge we need to do. Uh, and uh, as a last time, I will say, one of the big challenge I face is a biomedical waste management. And even see, we saw that uh, kidney care and we take the uh, urine, we should doing that. How we are going to really dispose that? And in many places we are seeing it is a common market, common place, it is coming. This biomedical waste, if you are not doing something, uh, doing exactly to make the biomedical waste concept into the any of the devices which you are bringing in, and that is going to be a big challenge because normally 85% of the waste is a normal waste. But even if it is a small percentage, it's going to mix with that. And that is going to be a big challenge of that. Today, fortunately, most of the hospital has the concept very clear on this biomedical waste. But I feel that in some of the areas where the startups are coming, even the diabetic people or the people who have the also people who are doing that, there is not much. So uh, the, it is not only the startup which you are making, not only the device which you are making, not only the instrument which you are making. Please see to that uh, the, the next part of it, disposing part of it, calibrating part of it, credentialing part of it is also going to be work. And I'm sure the market is wide open. The desire is always there. It is not that uh, sales desire or the market desire. It is a desire on the welfare of the humanity and the community. If all of you come forward and do, and definitely we all are there waiting to embrace your technology and uh, at the end it will be a beneficial to our uh, fraternity and the community which we are going to work for together thank you very much for this thank you very much sir uh, for your comments of course uh, these things would be taken uh, into consideration by the entrepreneurs now let's see whether up north dr pandey has uh, a separate view a different view a positive view on. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Ratan, and let me congratulate Dr. Das, Dr. Ash Ashok, and Dr. Asim for the excellent presentations. And I'm really impressed, you know, uh, by what our medical entrepreneurs are doing. So uh, it's it's a great job that they, they are doing. So I will address the issue uh, based on the three presentations because they are uh, quite specific. Dr. Das spoke about, you know. Uh, uh, remote monitoring application of, you know, uh, using the data. So uh, 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 basically application of artificial intelligence, he touched upon that, that those are the areas we can use and that has huge potential. As I understood from Dr. Das's presentation, you know, it can be used uh, in epidemiology across the country. India, unfortunately, we have no data. We always refer to use data. It can be used as a huge, uh, big screening tool. Uh, so in terms of uh, public health, it has great scope. Also because uh, largely the healthcare in the periphery is delivered by GPs. So the telemonitoring, because what he discussed was a basic concept. So from patient monitoring to the data coming to the GP and you know exchange of uh, uh, ideas or the treatment guidance, that would be a great thing across the length and breadth of India. So I think it is it has tremendous potential. The problem with the artificial intelligence here is, you know, we have, although we have moved from data collection to data mining, we are applying deep learning algorithms, but the, uh, the correctness of the algorithm is a question mark and how does the medical, uh, medical uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the agencies that, uh, that allow these to be used in public domain, like the FDUS, FDA, or our own DCGI, how are they going to analyze such complex methodology? So that remains another uh, important issue. But nevertheless, this is coming up in a big way. The amount of money that is available in, in uh, AI domain in healthcare is huge. So from 2015 or 2016, it is increasing. So I think it has tremendous potential. So that's a, uh, a great thing. The issues would be, for example, you are a laboratory person. Uh, two areas where there is a concern that there might be job losses or there might be issues is one is radiology. So these 
guys are writing editorials in the journal second is histopathology so diagnostics they can you know ai can really help come up in a big way uh, precision medicine or personalized medicine also but because of data mining it can come up in a big way so people think that future you know in future possibly the patient before visiting the doctor right now he he he's seen by a nurse so the nurse takes the blood pressure the vitals blood sugar etc and then he's sent to the doctor so maybe you know later he talks to a computer puts in his data so selective information comes based on his symptoms some probable you know three four diagnosis comes so the you know that way the precision in diagnostics will come gradually uh so that's there is a great scope now other two entrepreneurs they focused on you know one was a unique concept of uh, the cpr cardiopulmonary resuscitation he highlighted that because uh, in a country like sweden almost more than 50% of the population uh, knows how to do cpr so they have great results it's a, it's a common uh, you know teaching and training that is given to the citizens unfortunately that doesn't happen in india he highlighted the data and uh, the tool that he has created is very very simple i can understand because i am an intensivist we do it i am a part of the core group teams of the hospital so whenever there is a cardiac arrest emergency we respond so the unique training module has tremendous applicability in schools and other areas you know in, when when you and i were graduates there was no cpr in the medical uh, uh, in the mbbs curriculum now it has been incorporated and it's it's uh, i was told that this is now in schools also 9th and 10th class so i think this is a great application of something which has tremendous potential for saving human lives dr asims you know focus on ckd that was a very focused thing now when we look at any new your question was very specific any new technological innovations now what are the challenges challenge of course would start from funding from ideas they have to compete with some of the best uh, from the west where the where the funding is unlimited and of course they have to have you know their the 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 technological innovation or the test that they are trying to bring uh, must be accurate must be precise it must be easily applicable and it has to be efficient besides being cost efficient so that is the key and the other important thing is it has to be approved by the regulatory authorities say for example the simple device the you know the uh, physical device where ai is used is the apple apple i watch so there it is us fda approved for detection of atrial fibrillation when they use the uh, the uh, the ecg that it records and also it records the oxygen saturation so these are the only two things <coughs> so i think that will come up in a big way i'm surprised that i haven't heard about the, his proflu uh, test but it has tremendous applicability in india you know there is always a kidney scandal kidney surgery scandal because the number of organs needed is much 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 more than what is available and uh, if we can prevent it we can control it better by early diagnosis i think this will be a great thing so uh, same applies uh, to your field dr ashok also because as of now we are limited in 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 microbiological diagnosis by the by the tat turn around time so we look forward to tests where we can have the the microbiology data early on the culture reports early on because the ball lies in the microbiology researchers domain now we have some of the tests available uh, whether they are uh, you know highly specific or sensitive that remains a question mark if i get a lot of false positives i do not know how to interpret so there has to be universal acceptance by the uh, by by the microbiologist across and uh, uh, also you know these has to be cost effective some of the tests cannot come to india cannot be utilized because they are hugely expensive they are patented so these challenges would remain there so i'll 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 end my reply here thank you very much thank you very interesting session indeed thank you dr pande i think it's been hugely beneficial to all the three entrepreneurs your specific comments to each one of them and mr naris has has he ja uh, he is of course in mylan and vitress and they are doing excellent work for public health your comments sir so first of all i really admire the courage of entrepreneurs 
because uh, in healthcare particularly which is a very very these guys would have done something big in other sectors maybe fintech fmcg staying in healthcare which is again a very 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 intense uh, there are low margins and you need to validate the product up till the end and and decision is like right now uh, doesn't stay with the c like it's more of a b2b so really courageous work you guys have done and uh, products i i will not get into the details because dr pande has really given very very good insight around the enterprising insights so uh, i admire like uh, i think you guys are already far ahead in your products and products are already in the market only two three things which comes in my mind is like uh, see healthcare being a vast sector which is like when you have to commercialize it's more of a capital intensive work what i see is in india slowly slowly there is an ecosystem which is getting developed entrepreneur is a, a, is taking step in creating a product then you have organizations like which are hand holding you for proper validation who are well connected with the private as well as public health uh, doctors who are helping these startups to really grow up and come to a validation point and they can really certify yes this product is uh, calibrated which the doubts you sometimes get when you go to the market so organizations like india india health fund they are coming forward and taking handy holding and taking you getting you ready to the market third step maybe if you have capital to burn as dr pandey was saying western companies are going to burn a lot of capital in creating your own commerce versus creating your own commercial team versus coming to the companies because today if you see all pharmaceutical companies would like to become tomorrow healthcare companies and we have vast network where we can really do go to market nicely for you guys so uh, i i will say that not innovating in healthcare staying in healthcare and uh, for many years i think this itself is a big achievement and this is what i i believe uh, we have to create not create valuations in healthcare we have to really get value in healthcare and this is going to go long way okay i'll pause myself okay you know when i came back from uae i was i worked with dr ramnan and kanov who had developed health health slate which was used by asha workers in uh, in jammu and kashmir under a norway project mm. uh, the health slate would be in a backpack which would have a solar charger so the health uh, health and it could the health cube then developed into what is known as uh, the first health health slate developed into health cube health cube could do 30 um, tests at one time could also do yeah. urine examination could take blood pressure uh, could do these point of care testing and it was all in a backpack which the asha workers could go from place to place identifying high risk pregnancies uh, i was involved in validating some of the tests and yes what happens in innovation is that it is not as accurate as the standard hospital uh, based test so that uh, when you give hemoglobin you would find that the allowable error is only plus minus 1 gram but if we found that in uh, in uh, using this rapid test the values will differ so i think more work is required but yes the idea is powerful so you should not give up on these ideas and keep on improving on it and it's a const- then i joined uh, jamia hamdard for some time and the first complaint i had was there were 1000 health workers who were roaming around and i promised the vice chancellor dr kazi that i will get each one of them trained in cpr so that then you will say that there are 1000 volunteers moving around in jamia milia complex which all of them can attend to any sudden uh, a sudden person who for and i appreciate uh, my namesake dr ashok uh, doing this cpr work i think many of the societies should uh, hire your services many of the organizations should do that and they should practice 
this should be a standard practice for everybody that all indians or any anybody connected with medicine should know how to do cpr and i think many lives should be saved uh, would you any one of you three would like to respond before we go on to the second round of questions dr das okay uh, we'll come to asim let's go with the round dr das first thank you thank you for all your suggestions and uh, we are basically working on these three areas to make accuracy more uh, better with our partners we are also making uh, 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 attempt to validate all these uh, platforms in various uh, universities so that relevant studies support the accuracy and also the uh, delta change and uh, lastly we are also uh, uh, working on how to make it affordable uh people who, uh, in the remote test part of india who don't have any service at least we if you can place affordable and accessible screening practice for our partners we can we can at least identify uh, uh, the epidemiological data as uh, dr pandey suggested so yeah that no questions just we are uh, we are working on it and we think we will make the data change very good dr stoke yeah uh as you told uh, the idea came from the community itself in from 2018 and every saturday i train the common man in our hospital lobby in cpr so in 2019 uh, april or may after the training session five ladies came to me doctor you taught us this should be the rate this should be the rate uh, depth and uh, whether we are doing right or wrong so but at the time of real exigency will not be there can't there be something so that in your absence also we can perform better cpr just like now so that was the problem statement taken from the community itself so uh, as everybody told uh, behind every successful things there is a lady so i have five ladies very good dr <laughs> okay. asim and uh, i am raipur they have done the business uh, research validation for this all right very good thank you so i would i would uh, continue to thank uh, the panel for all the advices the all the points raised uh, by dr jailal and uh, dr pande uh, mr hasija as and you dr ashok so they are very very valid points as you know uh, startup is a journey it's not a end point so any product that we build it's it's and when we show it or take it out it's just the beginning so the product itself has a life cycle and uh, a duration over which it keeps on evolving so of course we will keep uh, all these suggestions in mind and uh, keep on improving the product and uh, so dr pande we have not yet launched this product yet so we are in the current beta stage we are looking out to uh, practitioners who would like to take uh, you know partner with us take and uh, test this we have all deployed it at just few uh, urologists locally who have given us a very good response for this so where we try to think of course screening is a very good place where such a product would be helpful but also we realize that it helps in a very rapid turnaround time for uh, a urologist or a nephrologist or a diabetologist to you know uh, take the patient to the right therapeutic uh, plan so that is where uh, we are trying to position accuracy of course is always a challenge and Uh, i would say with little of my experience and my academic research over the last many years uh, one of the major issues for accuracy is when we are comparing with gold standards for many of these innovative products the gold standard is not really a gold standard for example we have having a fluorescence based test whereas the gold standard is actually a immunoturbidity and when we uh, they use those technologies as gold standards it's a basic assumption that they do not have variance within themselves because we just rely on the data sheet that is provided by those manufacturers so this is also a challenge that uh, many of our startups who work in the domain of biochemistry and immuno based test face and of course it's only with time that uh, these practices would change where we begin to even question the goldness of the gold standards and start relying on uh, you know better methodologies to do validation so that accuracy is more accurate than what we believe it to be thank you all right uh, so let's have one more round of since now the three entrepreneurs are there and there are three advisors let's take one round of what is your wish for if you want 
a new technology to come? Uh, what is the innovation which would make you happiest? Uh, Dr. Jailal, you start the ball rolling. Uh, last time you talked about the, the things that they need to look out for. Now, what is it that will please you the maximum that you as a physician or a surgeon would accept that kind of innovation the maximum, the fastest? Yeah, what would you yes, sir. what would you look for yes sir yeah we are look, looking forward in the team mainly in the uh, surgical conditions where we are uh, looking for that one is uh, histopathological diagnosis which is going to be there because nowadays when we are sending the specimen for uh, that the histopathological diagnosis takes long time and there is a lot of uh, equivocal things comes and then we go for isc then we go for it takes much more time so if there is a device which comes with uh, artificial intelligence, I think they are working on that. And if that is going to come and to give a, a yearly diagnosis part, even like a frozen technology on the table when you are operating, if there is a, some result could come, that will be of a great help for us as a surgical field to go ahead on that. The main important thing is, we, as we have said earlier, uh, the, where you are standing on the uh, gold standard or accuracy, and if there is a small change which is going to be there, and if there's a one mistake, something happened, it is going to affect the entire the process of the startups and the entire process of the unit which is going to be there. So that is part where we need to uh, get it. The third most important thing is, uh, as we are standing about the data protection, especially when we are thinking in terms of cancer, oncology and surgical process, and this is more important, not like just protein diabetes and hypertension, People will be happy to say have that they, they have a diabetes. So they there are diseases which they are proud to own. But there are certain diseases which we are getting that the people will not like to that uh, other people are getting. You know. Uh, but very we, very we had a very bitter experience during the uh, rapid progression of the tele tele monitoring or the tele uh, medicine which has come into COVID time and uh, the data. Some patient is having uh, some disease and uh, it is easily spread out. That is uh, some. Uh, because newer things are coming, there is a data storage is not there. So that part also you have to be uh, specially take care and we will be able to uh, get into that. Uh, but do not go away with that uh, because for a single thing, for just measuring in uh, sugar and albumin, if there is a thousands and thousands of uh, start sets are coming, they are not able to uh, leave the standard of time of that one year period of the, that they are able to not. You know, not withstand the pressure of that period or sustainability is not there. So that again will be having the difficulty. Uh, finally, in the diagnostic part also, we still want more and more uh, uh, newer equipments and newer, uh, the easier equipments to come to us to uh, make a diagnosis from the earlier part of that. Uh, another important area is then antibiotic. Because today we are going to face a world where that antibiotic resistant is going to be of a, a great challenge. Uh, newer antibiotics are also very, very less for us. And we do not have much newer antibiotics to come in. So the rampant use of antibiotic is uh, getting a big challenge. So if there is a newer, some uh, startups coming with that, that is, you, you are going to say that in a, this environment, we are going to make entire uh, environment of the uh, uh, bacteria free or viral free so that you can operate without any antibiotic. So without your ward can be in every common ward in a medical college, there is a crowded in the fear of that, that every day we started giving five days antibiotic injection. So if you can come out with a model where we can say that uh, this light or this way that uh, we will be able to provide a complete uh, environment of uh, sanitation free. So that is another big challenge which we are getting. So that this area is also opened up and we welcome uh, input and suggestions on that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. There is Haystack, which is being incubated in Mumbai IIT, which has uh, which has a uh, next generation sequencing method where they can uh, take the blood and detect even the presence of bacteria, fungus, virus, or any pathogen. And uh, they, ha they are trying to do a decentralized model so that you don't have to send to a central lab. They will set up the system in your hospital. And uh, I guess that is what's going to be the future, that not centralized locations, but decentralized testing and testing meeting your requirements. Dr. Pandey, what's your wish list? 
Well, one is, uh, you know, uh, thank you for the uh, very nice discussion. One of the dreams says, you know, long back I attended a session where uh, microbiologists from Philippines attended. So I was surprised to know that that small country has complete microbiological database and it is mandated by law to enter all the microbiology reports into the national system. And you can have respiratory wise, the city wise, zone wise, uh, you know, uh, idea about the infection that they are having. So where are we? We are nowhere near that. So I think digitalization of the health records and the, uh, the infection and other data, infection data is very, very important. So yes. uh, you, you are aware that uh, when we had this, uh, um, uh, the David Timber Moore's paper on NDM1, there was a lot of, uh, you know, media outcry and everybody wanted to say that it's bad. And, but that's a reality. We have a problem. So uh, what uh, Dr. Jailal said, I think that makes a lot of sense that we need rapid diagnostics. I'm repeating again, we need rapid diagnostics. We need something like a, a validated... Uh, say sepsis screen, uh, that is the need of the hour, that is what we need. And, uh, you know, these are the things which will reduce the overuse or unnecessary use of antibiotics. So that is, uh, 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 would be a great thing to have. And in my field, besides the sepsis screen, I would also like to have, uh, you know, uh, something which is, uh, you know, better hemodynamic data, which is unique, which is non-invasive in nature, and which we can also advise to the patient to use at home, and it can transmit the data to us so that post-discharge in those who are having chronic disease, we can monitor them, we can advise them, and, you know, advise, suggest hospitalization as and when it is required. So I think uh, it has tremendous potential uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, providing care to the patients, improving the quality of care, and of course one of the things would be uh, you know the uh, application of AI in a big way. Remote monitoring uh, is a great thing. COVID, everybody was giving remote prescriptions. That was the simplest way of using. Uh, you know, people used WhatsApp, Facebook, and other tools. So I think if we can establish that network across the country, you know, long back I tried doing that. My problem was if I'm, uh, this basically uses the trending uh, software. So I can pick up events early and tell my partner there in a remote area that, look, this is uh, going to happen. So you have to do this. The problem was the people there in the periphery did not know how to utilize or implement that intervention. So that was the bottleneck. So I think we need to have that kind of a network, some basic training across the length and breadth of India, so that if we are offering some advice that that is implementable there. So that is very, very important. Thanks, sir. Uh, Mr. Naresh Hasija, what is your wish list? So I think uh, we really heard uh, both the doctors talking from uh, treating point of view. What I personally believe is, I think as uh, last Dr. Rajesh said, about AI. This is three key technologies like AI, e-health, what uh, Mattel presented today. It has a huge scope. And of course, the wearable devices, I think, which we were having discussion. So uh, in AI, actually, there is a rapid progress already. If you see, uh, I think, in radio imaging, when uh, there are studies which are talking like uh, if, if a human is, is seeing an image which is telling 65% time correct, but when a machine is uh, talking about it, machine is talking 95% time correct. So, so I think that that replacement, or I will say that that augmentation of that radio imaging is going to happen in AI. Similarly, as uh, one of the panelists said about histopathology, I think there also we see a huge scope of AI. Third and very important is in drug discovery. There, I think. Uh, you know that it takes 40 to 50 years for any research to happen. I think AI is surely going to augment uh, or maybe shrink those number of years and bring better targets, better molecules for uh, for future. I think the way antibiotics are getting short right now, I think a lot of work should have been happening in the background with AI. 
the next important thing sir i feel is uh, which is like a kind of a dream there should be an integrated healthcare system so uh, what uh, dr das presented i see this as a glimpse of moving to that side maybe today you can say that or maybe today we can feel that equipments are not calibrated they are here and there in reporting but if you ask me personally 5 to 10% 15% variation in primary care in early diagnosis should be okay should be permissible because these are not the confirmatory tests this these tests are giving a glimpse to a uh, treating physician by reducing his his huge load of primary care telling him this patient might be having diabetes please go for confirmatory test so i believe the integrated disease management which can reduce load on our tertiary care centers should be done as a part of primary and uh, we are moving into that that side in in wearable uh, all of us have come to a stage where we have started taking preventive care we like we are recording our data regularly and this data can be used tomorrow for our betterment continuous monitoring of patients at home is becoming a normal norm like people are taking steps in that in that direction and it can become very good for public health system where huge we have huge load on tertiary care centers and of course teleconsultation as a part where for, I, my recommendation is for primary care teleconsultation is a good tool where you can at least quickly identify the disease and you can send him to a face to face meeting with the doctor so it can play a a role in that space and we can really make india from sick care to a healthcare side so i i think we are moving in the right direction thank you right very good um so see innovation is a new idea which has been implemented for the benefit now if it is it is working on a a known thing then it is sustainable innovation why disruptive innovation means that it's a new concept a new way of working which completely changes and it actually starts from the bottom because it is cost effective and then slowly as it becomes better and better by the way and more people use it it will replace the existing and then we would have a different way of working if the 19th century was the century for industrial revolution the 20th century was the digital revolution with the uh, with analog being turned converted into digital and now digital technology would drive the new innovations and i'm very happy that we had three experts and three entrepreneurs interacting and an opportunity being provided to share ideas to hone their skills and then go back and work again some more so that the society will benefit things will become better and the way we work would be improved so the patient will benefit nowadays it will everything will be patient centric test at home is what the patient is asking that is why most of the labs now offer home collection and if the testing can be done and if people can be assured of health while they are roaming around then instead of being onlookers in any accidents we would be active participants in taking care of the patient i thank all of you for your presentations and i thank uh, both uh, health uh, learning uh, learning hub as well as vitres for giving us this opportunity thank you back to the and back to subhi please thank you so much sir so i request all the speakers present here so kindly uh, check the question and uh, answer section if they could answer the questions live uh, shall i read out uh, the questions sir yes in, if there is anything that uh, we missed out um sir in the q and a box there are certain questions that are being uh, taken up so okay. uh, what will be the cost of per flow anyone if any of the uh, speakers would like to answer the question 
So I think it's, it's the ProFlow U. Yeah. yeah. ProFlow U. So, so uh, we haven't yet commercially launched the product. But uh, so we are trying to price the reader device at about uh, 10,000 rupees and per test would be roughly about 100 rupees. So if you're interested, uh, you can uh, go to the proflowu.in and leave a request and we would like to connect with you. Proflowu.com. Uh, sir, it would be better if you could mention the website in the chat section. I would so our users could get a better insight for that. Um, See, uh, people should realize that price will always fall yes. as the test is used more and more. You would remember that when, uh, when, uh, when treatment for HIV started, it used to be $10,000 per patient. And subsequently, when Indians got into the act, then it was available at 1,000 or less per, per, per persons. So one is, uh, so price should not be, it should be first part should be, is it useful? Is it, make it making things easier for me? That is the first question to be answered. Price will come at subsequently. Price is important. I understand that we operate in a very price sensitive market, but price is not number one. Though any new innovation will initially may cost more, but then subsequently when it is adapted, prices will fall down and it will be affordable and will save you money as well as time. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, wonderful closing session. Uh, now, I would like to uh, proceed with the vote of thanks. Uh, by the time I request all the attendees present here that we have launched post polls to kindly summon their polls. So with gratitude and immense pleasure, Medical Learning Hub would like to thank Bhubaneswar City Knowledge Innovation Cluster Foundation and Office of Principal Scientific Advisor to, to the Government of India for co-hosting this event with us. I would like to thank our speakers, Dr. Soumya Kandas, Dr. Ashok Bhandmali, Dr. Asim Mishra, for sharing their wonderful innovations towards diagnosis with us. I would thank Dr. Ashok Ratan for his wonderful moderation and our panelists, Dr. J.A. Jayalal, Dr. Rajesh Pandey, and Mr. Naresh Hasija for, for sharing their strong opinion and valuable time to us. Thank you so much, sir. We really are in a dire need to spread this information amongst this community regarding the innovations towards diagnosis to make the healthcare platform more easier and simpler. Thanks to Viatris for supporting us throughout this event. We thank all the participants for being with us. We also have upcoming CMEs and conferences in different specializations like field of gynecology and uh, oncology, breast oncology, prostate oncology. So I'll request all the participants to kindly uh, subscribe to our newsletters and uh, kindly subscribe us to our Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook channels. Thank you all for your wonderful time and sharing your valuable opinions. Thanks to all the participants and all the panelists and moderator, Dr. Ashoka. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Goodbye. I'll request all the participants to kindly submit their polls.
Thank you all for staying with us. We would be ending our polls.